Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Clancy, um, and thank you for coming to Don't Just Design and Build the Death Star, Maintain It Too. Um, I know that's kind of a, a kind of weird topic, I know, but if anyone's a Star Wars fan, I am a giant <laughs> Star Wars fan, obviously, because I'm talking about the Death Star. So, um, I uh, work at GoDaddy, and I'm a program manager with WordPress at GoDaddy. Um, this is me over in a uh, little shop in downtown Boston here, and that is Totoro, and uh, it was this giant Totoro, and my kids love Totoro, so I took a picture with him. So uh, I uh, <laughs> wanted to give this talk because um, one of the biggest things I hear from people all the time is, um, I, I built my website, and I'm good to go, and I'm done. So if you already built, built your website and you're maintaining it, it's probably not the talk for you. This is a very beginner course and uh, meant to uh, really get you started into understanding what the next steps are after you built your website. So, this is your website. Super awesome. Death Star, right? You're going to bring peace to the world of the internet uh, with this Death Star, and your website's perfect, right? So, um, it's everything you wanted it to be. You spent months working on it. Um, so, what do you do next? Well, you're going to have this band of rebels come, and they're going to completely destroy your website. No matter what you do, if you do not start doing things to protect your website, they're just going to destroy all of your work. <laughs> so, um, this is not meant to scare you, but it's a warning to have you understand the importance of taking care of your website after it's built. So the first thing you want to start with after you've built your website, you're done, you launched it, is you want to do backups for your website. Does anyone do backups now? All right, that's awesome. So um, there's a plugin called VaultPress that you can use to back up your website. Um, there is another one called Backup Buddy. And there's another system called Manage WP that you can use to back up your website. Um, my personal favorite is to use any one of those and make a local backup um, and a local copy of that. So the reason for that is because any one of those systems can fail at any time. Um, if you have a backup on your local computer or you put it on a thumb drive, whatever you want to do, uh, you now have this local copy. And I'm not saying to do that every single day, but you definitely want to do it at least once a month, once every couple months, because like I said, if one of those systems fails, if you have it on, you have it on your personal machine or on this thumb drive that's hidden away. So, I, I stress backups first because um, any, anything that can go wrong with your website, if you at least have a backup of your website, you can easily revert back to it and have a point that you can go from to begin rebuilding your site. Even if you've lost content, whatever it may be like that, um, you have this backup available to you at any time. So, um, it back, the backups are the number one priority for, for you after you build your website, even while you're building your website, but um, definitely the most important item. So, updates. Um, so, WordPress has all of these great features, and the core installation gets updated all the time. So, if you're not already on a host that does updates, uh, like manage WordPress platform, whatever it may be, may already update the core of WordPress for you. But that mean, doesn't mean that they've updated the plugins and themes for you. So uh, the first thing you want to do with updating your site is to always update your plugins. Make sure that they're always up to date no matter what. Um, then you want to move on to updating your themes. So whatever theme you have installed, Make sure it has an update. If it's a premium theme you purchased from somewhere else and it needs to be manually updated, you need to manually update that every time there's an update available. And then, of course, the WordPress core. You want to make sure that that's updated as frequently as you possibly can. Now, with that WordPress core, 
you have your plugins, themes, and core. They can always conflict with each other. And sometimes if you've set up your WordPress core to automatically update for you, your themes and your plugins might not be able to keep up with those updates, and there may be conflicts. So there's a cool plugin called WP Rollback that you can actually use that you can roll back your website. So a good example of this might be that um, WordPress launches a patch and an update for you. It updates yours and it takes down your website. Um, and it could be a plugin conflict, like I said, or a theme. I'm not really sure what it might be, but what you want to do is look for an update from one of those plugins or themes, update it if possible. If there is nothing available, you can always roll back your WordPress website. Now, it's not to say roll it back and just leave it because you're now on an outdated version, but it'll give you a chance to, or your, your theme and your plugin developers, whoever they may be, to update to whatever the WordPress core is. Most themes and plugins um, that are really popular are they're involved with the WordPress core and they get the releases and they update frequently too. So it's not usually a big issue when you're using something that's a theme or plugin that's consistently updated. But like I said, WP Rollback, it's a very neat tool for you to roll back your website um, if you need to. So security, that's next biggest thing. So I already talked about the updates that's a huge part of security for you. So making sure that everything's up to date, all those vulnerabilities are taken care of. So we've already taken care of those in the updates item. So we move on to uh, having a strong password. Everyone says it all the time, right? Um, does anyone have an example of what we might consider a strong password? How many characters? Eight or more. How many? One to twelve? Yeah. So, oh, more than twelve. Okay, sorry. I thought you said one to twelve. So definitely at least twelve. I would even say twenty characters or more. So um, now that's really difficult to remember, right? So you want to use something like a password manager to keep that password um, and make sure that you don't lose it. Um, I personally use LastPass for my passwords, and all of my passwords are at least 20 characters on everything. And they're all different. You know, I don't share my same password across any of my sites or any of my databases, anything like that. They're all different. So that's why I use LastPass. It allows me to, to manage all those 20 character passwords. So um, you do, like capitals, okay, everything, yeah. Character. LastPass will let you actually auto-generate a password to whatever specifications that you want. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool for that. Um, and like I said, I, I personally don't even know any of my passwords except for my LastPass one. And I, and I change them all every 30 to 60 days, and I change my LastPass one every 30 days. So that was the next thing I was going to talk about was make sure you're updating them frequently. So. Yes. Do you also enforce that with your customers' passwords for their logins? Like for my my personal clients or yeah, like uh, your clients' passwords. What, this is this is in relation to the hosting. This is in relation to the WordPress editor sites, right? So what I will happens? actually I will actually get into that okay. Um, okay. in uh, the next part a little bit. But to answer some of that. Um, I do have a different password for my FTP, my database, and my WordPress login. All three have different passwords. If somebody access to this last password, you can share access um, to other people, and um, like if something were to happen to me, like my wife now would have access to every account that that uh, that I have. So I do share that with her so that that she has the access. Yeah, because <laughs> definitely don't want, you know, like I said, if something happens to me as I'm traveling or something, she would be able to log in and still pay bills and do whatever she needs to do. So the next thing for security is to limit your logins. Um, so for this, uh, this is mainly in regards to like a brute force attempt. So someone trying every possible password combination on your WordPress login and trying to get into your account and basically guess your password. You can use, um, Jetpack has a, a security feature that will help limit the logins. 
uh, if you have Jetpack installed, or there's a server security and limit logins attempt plugin that you can use, and that one will also limit the amount of logins, and it'll even show you how many times people have tried to access your site and um, how many times that it, it blocked that. So um, these these things are very simple, but you know there's there's constantly people that are trying to hit your WordPress admin because pretty much every WordPress site has your domain slash WP dash admin and the people out there that want to get into your site know that. What is besides Jetpack did you make, sorry? Um, it's called server security and limit login attempts. C E R B E R. It's a plugin. Yes. Okay. So the next thing is to scan your site. Um, you can do this frequently with the uh, Sucuri site check to check for vulnerabilities. Um, Sucuri does offer a free site check that you can do. And this will just run through your site, see if there's any blatant vulnerabilities um, as the free version. You can pay for more advanced features to, to um, do a more in-depth scan. There was a question in the back. How do you spell that? Sucuri. It's uh, S-U-C. U R I. What about a plugin like uh, WordFence that I've been using? Is that uh, something? Yeah, that's that's another thing that you can use too. Um, I I honestly have my, my preferred ones up here, but WordFence is definitely another one that that I know is very common and a lot of people like to use. Was that is that your same question too? Yeah, I just okay. wonder why you like Sucuri better. Uh, well, I personally use them, and then GoDaddy d did acquire Sucuri, oh. so um, it was not meant to be that. But I actually used them prior to that, so for me personally, that's still what I continue to use. So the next thing is an SSL. I'm sure everyone has heard this, um, and it is kind of a big deal now <laughs> to have. So uh, a lot of a lot of uh, misunderstanding around an SSL certificate is uh, to basically if you have an e-commerce site that you need an SSL and that's the only time you need it. Um, an SSL, what it does was it encrypts the data that you enter into your website and that's being transmitted from your browser to the server. Now the reason that's important, even if you don't have an e-commerce site or anything else on there is because what happens every time you log in to wp-admin? Data is being passed from your browser to the web server, right, to make that request. So um, an SSL certificate, HTTPS, um, is now even enforced from the browser level to users. They let, it lets them know that the site is not secure. Um, and that does scare a lot of people when they go to a website. But for you, as WordPress administrators, it's extremely important to be able to encrypt even your password going back and forth. So um, different companies offer an SSL. You can also typically install a free SSL now um, very easily. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult, but most of the time it's, it's pretty simple. So last thing, I did mention the themes and plugins, right? Making sure that those are updated, but um, in addition to making sure they're updated, an extremely important piece is to make smart theme and plugin decisions. And what I mean by that is uh, you're searching for, let's say, uh, the limit login attempts, right, that I just mentioned earlier. And you find one, and it has no installs, and it hasn't been updated in a year. You probably should not be installing that type of plugin on your WordPress site unless you're familiar with the plugin and that you can go in and you can determine if there's any vulnerabilities. And hopefully that uh, most people in here are not at that kind of development level, but um, it's that's why I'm saying like you have to make smart decisions. You want to check two things for it. You want to check the amount of updates, or excuse me, the amount, the frequency of updates. So. Has it been updated in a week? Has it been updated in a month? That type of thing. It shows you on your in plugin. And then you also want to check to see how many installs, active installs, it has. So um, one thing I don't usually recommend relying heavily on is the reviews, because 
a plugin may have very positive reviews and it hasn't been updated in two years. It's an older plugin that no one uses anymore. And it might have, like I said, very positive reviews in the past, but that developer's moved on. What would be your recommended amount of updates of, for that you know, reason? I personally would look at one, at least a month for Every updates. Month? Yeah. There was a question in the back? It was the same question. Oh, okay. Well, that's, this is really easy. Everyone has the same question. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions regarding the security? Um, yes? Do you uh, two-factor your last pass? Um, I do two-factor the last pass. I didn't actually include that. I really debated including two-factor two authentication um, into the slide deck because um, it, it can be cumbersome for a lot of newcomers. Um, but two-factor authentication basically you know, allows you to um, use your phone to log in and approve a device, that type of thing. And you can install a plugin, a two-factor authentication plugin through WordPress and enable that, and you can use something like Google Authenticator to generate your codes, things like that. But like I said, it's two-factor authentication if you want to learn more about it. There's a lot of information out there, but um, you know, if, you're, if you're the type of person that happens to lose your phone, it can, it can become a, 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 a trouble for you to try and uh, get those back. There are ways to recover it, but um, like I said, it, it, it's not something I really wanted to include in this, but uh, do you? Yeah. Like? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I use my phone for it, but there was a question back. So how effective are the plugins that, that put a, a little box on the login page that say I am I'm a human or I'm not I'm not a robot? Are those effective at all? I, I will actually get into a capture but for a for a different kind of okay. reason and that will be um, in two more topics, okay? Sure. So um, some minor kind of what I would say are not as important items, but are still important items to look at um, are to set your permalinks. You know, so the default WordPress permalinks, not so great, but um, you can go in and you can change them to whatever you'd like. You can enable pretty permalinks, things like that, and you can make them look really good. Um, does anyone not know what a permalink is? So it's uh, after you make a post, it might have like a six, an S, a P, something like that afterwards, and um, a, a pretty permalink would actually add like text around that so that it, it looks nice and, and it's recognizable to maybe a user who um, happens to be looking at your website and might look at the URL. So it would have domain.com slash, you know, uh, 2015-2, something like that, where it's a little bit more attractive looking for users. They can see the actual context in the, in the URL itself. That has nothing to do with security, right? This is a new no, topic. No, this, okay. is, this is, yeah, I moved on to a, the administrative tasks. Okay. Yes? If you change the setting of your permalinks to something more customized from the default, um, is there anything that you need to do for any posts that you've put up before? You um, if, if you hard code them, yes. So like if you were to um, like upload an image or link to an old post, it's not going to update that old post. So it, that's what I mean by uh, hard code it. You can create a link that, um, that is dynamic that does not use the full URL. So, for example, that I, it's kind of hard to describe without, without a, an image of it, but you would have domain.com um, slash you know, post to. Um, that would be considered a hard-coded link. A dynamic link would be post to slash, because what, you're, what the server would do is look for anything called post to. Does that help a little bit? Yep. Okay. Yes? <clears throat> Within the server, if two people have access to the uh, login and password, uh, can they actually have also access to the emails even though the password has been changed within your ad admin account? So the question was, in the server, if you have this, the username and password for the admin, do they have access to the email? Right, so within the server, let's say we have SMTP Gmail accounts, mm -hmm. and 
do people are admin of the page and have access to the server as well? Would those two people, um, so if, if they have a different strong password within their VP admin, um, and they cannot each one of them access to their email, but if they have access to the server, can they actually get into the emails of the other person? No, because it would be on Gmail server. Unless that person made the same username and password um, for their Gmail um, or happen to set the same user or password for their Gmail, that would be the only way that they can get in. So that's why I recommend a different password for every login that you have. Um, now, uh, you can, if you have access to the server, go in and change an email address for WordPress through the server, but um, it, that's a little bit more difficult to do. You have to, it's a little, a little bit further topic. But if, the, if the password is changed within the Gmail account, then it should be fine. Correct. What, if, what about the password and username of the CP, uh, of the C panel? So, that would, that would fall under under the same thing. So like, let's say uh, the question was, what about your username and password if, if it's on the C panel? So um, if, you, if you still have email at Gmail, then that's okay. But if you're hosting your email on C panel and they have access to your C panel, they can go in and they can change the email address, password that's hosted on the C panel if they have that C panel login. So that means to, if they have the cPanel login, they can enter into the email account? Yes. yes. They yeah. can enter into the email account? Yes. Even though the password has been changed? For that cPanel email, but not for like a Gmail. So if they enter into cPanel, can they actually read the emails that are going back and forth within the email? It, yes, we can, we can talk about it more after. Uh, I can hopefully explain it to you a little bit better, but ultimately they, they can if they're the admin on that cPanel. So if it's not admin in WordPress, it would be admin on the cPanel. Okay, so earlier um, the, the question was brought up, what about users having access? So let's say that you're not the only person that is writing for your site or working on your site. So you want to make sure that users have the right permissions. Um, if you're the administrator of your WordPress, you want to have the admin login. If you have someone that's just writing for you on your blog or on your site or maybe adding products, you only want, you want to be able to restrict their access. So give them their own user that you can restrict access. Don't give them a user that has admin rights. But more than one person can be admin, is that correct? Yes, more than one person can be admin, but if you don't need another person to have the administrative rights, you want to, you definitely want to have uh, only one person with administrative rights. Because that's now two points of failure if someone doesn't update their password, right? And if they have full administrative access, they're going to be able to, whoever gets into their account is going to be able to do whatever they need. So last thing is uh, to clean up post revisions. Um, you can use um, two plugins called WP Sweep or WP Cleanup. And what this is is that if you're um, writing a post or you're making a page and you save a revision and then you maybe post a page or post that post, sometimes what will happen is, depending on the way you do it, it'll save the revision. And this isn't a huge thing that, that you need to do unless you're really writing a lot, but what will happen is it will leave a lot of those entries in the database, and it uh, will create extra, basically, database size and overhead. So it's something super quick and easy to do. Like I said, WP Sweep or WP Cleanup, and uh, those are two plugins that you can use, which I prefer to um, clean those up. So. I mean, if you're, if you're only doing four or five pages, it's probably not an issue, but if you're writing 350, 400, 500 pages, it's definitely something that you want to run. It'll help speed up your website slightly. Uh, it just decreases the database size. So next is comment spam. So I'm sure that everyone has, has had comment spam um, on their website. 
Uh, if you haven't, you are an amazing individual, and I would love for you to come give a talk about <laughs> about it. But uh, I've myself have posted a WordPress site, and within a day had comment spam because I forgot to change certain settings on my uh, my site. So uh, to help eliminate comment spam. What you can do is you can install a CAPTCHA, and we talked about this earlier, was I'm a human type of thing, right? You can install a CAPTCHA on your site, um, and you can also use that CAPTCHA for your login, you can use it for a form that you may have, whatever you, you might want to use that to validate that the user is actually a user and uh, not just a bot on your site. Um, that doesn't, that's not to say that comment spam is still not done by actual humans, but again, they're, it's, it's, a, it's a way to help reduce the automation that, that humans have created to do comment spam. So another one is a kismet, um, and this will use a lot of, um, basically it sources what the rest of WordPress websites are experiencing that have a kismet for typical things that are marked as comment spam. So if there is someone out there who creates a new link that is a comment spam or a new type of comment spam and it goes out there, a kismet will, uh, is, learns, it has, um, it has history, it has, like I said, what, whatever's happening in the world right now, and it will help eliminate new comment spam that's coming in. Um, that's, there's a free version of it, and then there also are paid versions of a kismet. So what's the plugins? Yes. Yeah, CAPTCHA, I didn't give a CAPTCHA plugin because there's so many different ones out there, but um, you can just literally type CAPTCHA in the plugin repository and you'll find plenty of items. Yes? Do you just automatically use a Kismet? I do, yes. Yeah. If, if I'm going to have comments on a site, I automatically will put a, a Kismet on there. The Kismet comes with the basic install. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but I will, I will turn it on specifically. Okay. So. <laughs> Uh, another one is to enable moderate comments. Now, if you don't have these other things done, um, you're going to be spending your entire day moderating spam comments um, on your on your post or your pages, whatever you might have comments enabled on. Um, so you can go into the post settings and you can enable moderate comments in there. And you can also set it to email you if you'd like when a, com a new comment comes in. But like I said, if you don't do these other things, you're going to receive a lot of comments to begin moderating. You're getting a lot of head nods, so I'm assuming a lot of people have, have been through this same situation before. Um, you can also turn off the comments completely. So if you have an informational page about yourself or your business, you might not want comments to even be enabled at all on that page. So if you don't need comments, turn them off so that you don't even have to worry about that you getting a comment spam or maybe someone just writing a comment that is not even applicable to what you're doing or, um, you know, or, or applicable to that page at all. So everyone's favorite, I know this is what everyone was waiting for, <laughs> was SEO. <laughs> so um, you can uh, create a sitemap. .xml and robots.txt. Now, these are two fantastic items that basically will allow search engines to crawl your website and to basically understand how your website is structured. Um, you should definitely have these if you want to be ranked on any type of SEO. Now, I know I said these two files and probably everyone's like, how do you, how do, you do those things? Well, there are plugins that will help you do these. Um, one is the Yoast SEO plugin. Um, hopefully everyone has heard of it. It's a very popular plugin right now and uh, pretty much sets the standard. It can be complicated, um, but it does pretty much give you everything you need to help yourself get ranked on, on the SEO and set up your, set up your website so that uh, search engines can crawl it. Uh, the next is uh, the all-in-one SEO pack. Um, what I do not recommend is installing both and having both activated at the same time. You pick one or the other. And that's pretty standard for any plugin, but you definitely don't want these two plugins to conflict with each other. So to recap, uh, 
you want to start with backups. Then you want to go with your updates, your security, your administrative tasks, comment spam, and then SEO. And the reason I put SEO last is because if the search engines start crawling your website and you start to get ranked and you haven't done any of these other items, you're going to start to have problems for yourself. So each one of these items was just a very brief discussion of what they are. I didn't go into a lot of detail on what, on what each one does and how to really accomplish those because each one of those is basically their own topic. And typically at a camp, there will be a, a talk for each one of those items. And so uh, what I highly recommend everyone doing is if one of, those, if one of these are on the tracks right now, um, you go see them today and tomorrow. If you don't have time or there's something else you want to see, if anyone has not already checked out the website wordpress.tv, there are previous talks on there, and I, I know for sure there's talks on every one of these topics. So that was wordpress.tv, just in case anyone didn't get a chance to write that down. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, we'll try to do these on mic here if we can. I, I shout loud enough. <laughs> I can hear you. So. I'm a loud talker. Um, on the backups, uh, just wanted to reconfirm. Do you recommend or not recommend the host hosted versions of backups so that we don't have to deal with this ourselves? So I, just to give an example, um, GoDaddy's managed WordPress, we do 30-day backups that are included with the product. Um, I still personally back up my own stuff because if GoDaddy's backups fail, then I don't have a backup of my website. So pretty much anyone will tell you to make sure that you're backing up, you have your own backup, in addition to what the host has. Um, now aside from that, what you don't want to have is you install a backup client that starts making a backup of a backup of a backup. You want to make sure that you set your backup retention uh, to a certain time frame and that they don't back up to on your hosting plan. So. Sometimes what will happen is people will install a backup client, set it to automate, and it backs up every day, and it puts it inside where the rest of their files are, and so it starts backing up that backup. And then the next day it backs up two backups, right? So um, you know, you want to make sure that you configure your backup client so that it doesn't do something like that. Because then your host is going to reach out to you and say, what are you doing? You're using up a ton of space. <laughs> there was another question in the, in the very back there. Wait, wait, wait. Thank you. Um, if you have WordPress and Updraft Plus, would they be conflicting? What was that? I'm sorry? Um, if you have WordPress of Jetpack mm -hmm. and Updraft Plus. Oh, what was the last? I'm not Updraft. 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 Plus. Um, I'm not familiar with that one, but if you have just WordPress and Jetpack, um, those. Updraft is not going to, like, unless you're creating a backup with Jetpack 2, but I believe uh, if anyone knows, uh, Jetpack stores off of the server, so those are usually not going to conflict with each other. You're just going to end up creating multiple backups, right, of, of the same thing. But if Updraft saves your backup somewhere that Jetpack does not exclude, it can create backups of that Updraft backup. So would removing one of the two would be better? It, it's best to have, I, I always recommend one. I don't recommend setting up multiples because again, you could run into the situation where if you don't configure it right, you're going to create backups of backups of backups. Thank you. Hi. Um, okay, so when you submit your <coughs> site map to Google, do you only need to do that one time? I yes. continuously update your website. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to make a significant change to your website, like you're going to change your domain or something like that, you definitely want to submit it again. But if if you're if you're just building your site right and you're not planning on changing your domain, I would only recommend submitting it once. Okay. There was uh, one blue shirt. Blue shirt. Thank you. Thank you. So you recommended making a local copy of your site. I'm wondering, do you use a plugin to do that, or do you actually go into the database and export it manually? I, I literally go into the database, export it manually, and then I copy all of the files via FTP and zip them up and put them on a, a local drive that I have. Um, and that 
I literally put into a fire safe and it has other things on it, but that's how, that's how granular I get. I've lost three websites with thousands of images on them um, because the host backups failed and my local hard drive failed too. Do you know if there are any plugins to do it? Not necessarily as extensively as you do it, but at least to a certain degree. Um, I do. Does anyone maybe know one? I know you can configure a couple to back up locally. Akiba. Akiba. Does WordPress not allow you to back up locally? Um, I'm not. I'm not totally sure if they if they do or not. But for me, like I said, I manually do it now. You know, this is just my paranoia, but um, I manually do it because you know I want to make sure that that everything is there and that I can see that everything was transferred. There, there was a question up here. I'm good. I just want to be loud. <coughs> oh, sure. Can you uh, describe the, robot, the robots.txt? I've made a sitemap and uploaded that to the root folder, but the robots piece of it, I'm not sure how that relates. So can you clarify that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, back to back to our sitemap and dot, dot .xml and robots.txt. So, um, so basically the robots, what it does is it directs the search engines to um, scan a certain part of your website. So like let's say that, oh five minutes, sorry. <laughs> so let's say that um, you have, a, like you have a website, right, but then you also have a version of your website that maybe is just for the business and like that is like a, maybe a CRM portal type of thing and you don't want search engines to actually search through that, you can set up your robots.txt to basically tell it, don't look at this, these items, and to block them from looking at it. Does that kind of help a little bit there? So if, do, I go, do I go to, I mean, yeah, I guess I just don't know how to do that. So how would I learn it? Is that, I just, I can just go. I can, I can show you afterwards, okay. yeah. Cool, thanks. Did you have something to add? Mike, I saw you looking at me, or do you have a question? Does if you don't need a robots txt, does it doesn't have having that make it more vulnerable though? No. No. Okay. Not at all. I think this do we have time? This is the last one or so if you're putting the these, these files in your root folder, why do you need to submit them to Google? Doesn't Google just find them in your root folder? It will, but it, it still has to scan everything, right? So you want to have something to kind of direct them. It's, it's just, uh, I kind of don't, I don't know the best way to describe it, but it's just a direction for the search engine bots to be able to know where to go and to scan with the, the most important files. I would think they would just go to the root folder first, look for these files, and then know where to go. So. Yes, yes and no, but like I said, if you have a specific file that they're looking for, it's going to help increase how fast you get indexed, the frequency of your index, things like that. We got time for about two more. Okay. Is there any more questions? Would you suggest using an alternate comment system like Discus to like reduce spam? Do you have any experience with that? Yes. So um, I've recently been looking at that for my own, and um, it's <laughs> it's a it's a tough decision to make. Um, if if you if you want a lot of people to comment, Discus is probably the best thing for you. Um, if you're really not wanting a lot of comments and you want to manage it a little bit better yourself or a little bit more yourself, um, I would not recommend uh, installing Discus at all. So it's just, it's how frequently you think people are going to comment on your website and how much in time you want to invest on managing those comments. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you all. Oh, wait, we have one more, but... Could you just quickly repeat uh, for the security, you said word, word fans, and what, what was the other? Yeah, do I have, let's see here, go back. <laughs> so, do you, uh, do you mean the site scanner, or do you mean the, just anything? 
So um, the Jetpack security feature uh, for limiting the login attempts and then the uh, server security and limit login attempts plugin and then uh, using the security site check to actually scan your website for vulnerabilities. All right, well, thank you all again. Uh, I appreciate you joining my talk.